Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam Ala Rasulul Kareem Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is Sister Catherine with the Islamic Outreach Center of Colorado And today we are going to be doing part 3 of our Ramadan reflections on Surah Al-Fatiha Surah Al-Fatiha is Um Umul Qur'an, it's Shifa, it's an essential part of all the obligatory prayers. Um, It's a beautiful surah, it's a dua all on its own, it's just conversation, it's a dialogue with Allah. Um, And it's the most fitting and beautiful opening for the Qur'an, obviously. It's... uh, I wanted to remind everybody to like and subscribe to the channel as well as this specific playlist. Um, You can select to get notifications because then you'll get kind of an update. I'm unfortunately, I'm not very regular at which days of the week I do these on. I try and do at least twice a week, Um, but the days vary by my kids (laughs) capability to to let go of me for a few hours to put this together and, and film. So inshallah subscribe so you can get those updates. Um, Now moving on, today we're going to discuss the second or first, depending on on, um, which scholar's opinion you favor, ayah in Surah Al-Fatiha. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Now here we have another of the most oft-repeated phrases in all of Islam, the tahmid or hamdullah. Um, now I see this phrase translated most often in English as either glory be to God, thanks be to God, all thanks and praise be to God. Um, Ibn Kathir, Rahim Allah, said in his tafsir of Surah Al-Fatiha that hamd means praise more than it means thanks. It's, it's slightly different, hamd and shukr. Um, the difference between hamd and shukr is that hamd is more a general Uh, in that it's a statement of praise for characteristics um, rather than than deeds. Uh, Shukr is for specific actions rather than characteristics or attributes, um, basically. So the L before hamd encompasses, it, it kind of includes all types of thanks or appreciation for Allah's characteristics uh, and attributes and abilities. The letters Alif Lam before the word serve um, to kind of just include all of that, all general. So essentially neither of the former translations, as is often the case, really gets the full point across. What we really have here is more along the lines of the praise, meaning all possible iterations of praise from all possible sources belong to or are due to Allah, through whom characteristics, attributes, and might, all of these things exist and occur and can praise. Um, Then we have a brief description of Allah's relation to the universe, to all of us. Al-Rab is the owner who has full authority over his property, what he is in ownership of. Uh, The word Rab alone is is only used for Allah. Um, as for other than Allah, it can be used, you could say, rub of something, you could specify kind of with a qualifier, math, master of such and such object or thing or place or person. Um, but rub on its own without that qualifier is a title reserved only for Allah. Now, Lord of what? Alameen encompasses everything outside of Allah. All of existence, all of creation. The word alam is is plural. There's no singular form. So this is all of creation. This is a very big, big word. Um, Allah says in the Quran in chapter 26, verses 23 to 24, A'udhu billahi rajim, Fir'aun said, and what is the Lord of the alamin? Musa said, the Lord of the heavens and the earth and all that is between them if you seek to be convinced with certainty. So essentially we're looking at an ayah that stands to remind us to whom we are speaking, who we are calling upon, and our place 
in relation to him. This should be our acknowledgement that not only do we praise him, but obviously all possible praise belongs solely to this incomparable master of all that is outside himself. All of his creation is under his complete mastery. And thus he deserves this praise for this capacity, for this ability, for this characteristic of being the creator of all things and allowing us to praise him. Um, I wanted to reflect on this ayah uh, and on the tahmid more specifically because just as with the basmala, I feel we often take it for granted. The more you use something, the easier it is to become kind of blind to it, kind of numb to its beauty. Uh, you know, if you drive a luxury car every day for 30 years, you can really get to the point where, you know, it, it seems kind of old. You know, you can you can take anything for granted. Um, you can take any luxury for granted. And this is a luxury. And that's something we should be clear on. Um, we just kind of let it roll off our tongues as a courtesy, as, you know, a show of humility, what have you. But it should really be something that causes us to pause and reflect. Just as we say, or should say, Bismillah, before beginning anything, we should be saying Alhamdulillah in regards to everything, every outcome, every possibility, any little thing that falls into the category of Alameen, that being everything, <laughs> everything. Um, so language matters, I guess, is, is my point. Um, and I think a lot of people take for granted how important our words are and how much we should guard that gate of, of our mouth. Um, Ibn Qayyim al Jawziya said, a person's tongue can give you the taste of his heart. Um, and, and that's a sound statement. Uh, you know, let's look at, look at a few very common terms luck and karma, you know, oh, I don't know. It just wasn't my lucky day or, oh, it's your lucky day. Oh, you're so lucky, you know, this and this, um, or, oh, you know, karma will catch up with him or, oh, this is just bad karma, I guess, for, for me being whatever previously. Now, I could go on, but let's stick to these two for now. Luck does not exist. Um, there is no such thing as chance in a universe that is under the mastery of a perfect creator. Who encompasses all. Um, all things were written and preserved before, long before the creation of the heavens and the earth. There is no chance. That's It's not a concept that is ours and we should leave it to those to whom it belongs. <laughs> um, and karma, we should really, really reflect before we just throw around terms that amount to shirk even in jest, maybe especially in jest. Um, you know, shirk is a terrifying thing that is the one sin we have been told that if we die upon it, it will not be forgiven. So even joking with it is a very frightening concept that I think we should, we should really reflect on and, and take for the seriousness that it deserves. And I know the typical rebuttal to this, the comeback is going to be, I was just joking. It's just a saying, you know, I, I didn't mean it like that, et cetera. But let's reflect on what we're doing here. Um, not only have we missed a chance to give the praise to Allah, to whom it is clearly due, but we have instead taken that praise and attributed it to something other than Allah. This isn't just laziness of forgetting to praise Allah. This is praising something else. Because when you say, you know, oh, it was my lucky day, you are taking the blessings that you received on that day and you are putting them in the lap of luck, which is not a thing that exists. It's like an idol without the statue. If you say, oh, I guess it's just bad karma, you are taking a lesson that maybe Allah was trying to teach you um, a trial he was trying to purify you through, and you are robbing it of the possible blessings that could have been earned by attributing it to something that does not exist. These are not our concepts. 
sisters. And we should, again, we should leave them where they lie. These aren't things we need to pick up and carry with us. These are not our words. These are not our ideals. Um, and inshallah, we have to be cognizant of that. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was reported by Mu'ad ibn Jabal as part of a longer narration to have said, may your mother lose you. People will be thrown on their faces into the hellfire on account of their tongues. And that's a, that's a frightening reminder. You know, our tongues will testify. They will testify. All parts of our body will be called to testify. But I think the tongue can be the easiest one for many people to lose control of, especially in America. As an American, I can tell you we are a culture that speaks very freely and very casually and typically with very little judgment and very little real contemplation. We just kind of talk to talk sometimes, and that's something we need to be wary of. That's a lesson I have endeavored to kind of internalize myself, that needlessly talking, talking vainly, talking about pointless things, the danger is that you fall into these habits of saying things just for the sake of saying them. Why would you say, oh, it wasn't my lucky day? What is, what is the point in that statement? What is the benefit for you or anyone else? And we also have to contemplate not only what our tongues will reap for us, but what we are putting into the universe, as it were, the concepts we're putting into others' presence, into others' heads. Um, ideas like luck and karma and whatever else, whatever other just kind of casual nonsense that we might spew out are not ideas we need to put into others because people, you know, friends pick things up, children, sisters, our kids, our kids. May Allah protect us from misguiding our children. Um, because as children, they are not accountable. We will answer for the ideas we put in their heads. And if we raise our children on casual, pointless, vain talking and throwing around terms like luck and karma and magic and whatever else, and they grow up with these ideas, <laughs> when do we know that they will discern that these are not Islamic concepts? that these are just casual things we said and we didn't mean it. How do they know that? So that's, that's the end of my rant for tonight. But may Allah help us to guard our tongues and to use them for good and to use them as the tools they're intended to be to praise him and to remind others to praise him. May Allah protect us from all forms of shirk, knowingly and unknowingly. And uh, inshallah, like, subscribe, and so you can follow along. And as always, thank you for watching. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.